All right, now let's take a look at structural model fit. We've already looked at measurement model fit, but there are some nuances to structural model fit that we need to attend to. In the CFA, we just connect the CFA, all the indicators to their factors and covary everything, and it's set up pretty well. But in a structural model, we get to choose which variables predict which variables. So let's assess this model, minus the interaction here. Let me get rid of that. Notice we have not specified every possible parameter. We're missing parameters from playfulness to ease of use and to skill acquisition. Let's calculate this. Just the regular algorithm, all the defaults, and go look at model fit. And you can see the model fit is pretty good. The CFI, the TLI, SRMR, the RMSEA, they all look like they're in the right range. Let's go back to our model and let's see what is the most potent path. It looks like from efficacy to ease of use is a very strong path. I'm going to delete it just to demonstrate a point. So let's delete that, calculate, run this again. Now, obviously our model fit should have dropped. We go back to model fit. Here we go, we have reds down here. The TLI is less than 0.9. The CFI is bordering 0.9 and the SRMR is well above 0.08. So we have a problem. Now, Smart PLS does not provide modification indices yet in the CBSEM side. Although you can look at the residual covariance matrix, standardized, which may give you clues as to misspecification on the measurement side. Bigger numbers means bigger residual, which means further from matching or fitting the data. Now, we had good fit in the measurement model, so I'm not worried about this. On the structural side, it's more difficult. We have to look at the graphical output and determine if we're missing a parameter that we should be estimating. Now, we already know that efficacy should lead to ease of use. The more confident you are, the easier it is to use. We just failed to specify it, or we deleted it. If we wanted, we could fully specify this. And now everything is connected to everything. Just gonna move that over here, it's out of the way. With a fully specified model, then the only way to have poor fit is through the measurement side. So we run this, basic model, run. We can see the model fit is pretty good. The SRMR corrected itself and the RMSEA is fine. So what is the correct approach? Well, if you have a lot of variables that seem that they should be related and you can theoretically justify those relationships, then connect them. Or if you have an a priori theory, which is more common, specify your theory in the model by connecting what you have theorized should be connected, whatever you have hypotheses for. And then if the model fit is bad, reconsider those paths. And if you do need to add one that you did not theorize, then make sure to justify that in the paper. Say, we had not accounted for the strength of the relationship between efficacy and ease of use. In order to achieve model fit, we connected those two variables with a regression line. Now, that doesn't perfectly match your theory. Are you allowed to do that? And the answer is, you must. Uh, you cannot move forward with a poor fitted model. You cannot assess structural hypotheses if your structural model is not a good fit with the data, if it's not a good approximation of reality. If you were to move forward with a bad fitting model, we couldn't trust any of the estimates it produced. So it'd be a useless model. So failing to achieve model fit for the sake of staying true to your theory is not a good scholarly approach. But if you do add a path, again, make sure to justify it both statistically and hopefully theoretically, maybe that path makes sense.